No, no. Hold on a sec. Boom. Okay, how's that? All right, apparently we had a bit of a technical difficulty. You can tell that I'm a pro streamer because I screwed it up yet again. So anyway, hey guys, welcome to That Mini's Paint Show. Good to have everybody here. We're going to be painting Oswald the Overladen. I love this particular miniature because it's chock full of details, including a chicken uh, hanging off the side, a plucked chicken, lanterns, barrels, kegs, bottles, bags, weapons. I mean, it's, it's all over this miniature. Um, so we're kind of excited to get it started. And also because he's carrying so many things, it just seemed very pertinent for the season right now. So, uh, hopefully you guys are seeing, uh, a fair bit of, of holiday cheer wherever you are. And if you're not, please join us tonight as we, we, we get some on our own as well. So, um, big thank you to Tabletop Audio. You can find them at tabletopaudio.com. They've, they're the ones who created the sound and ambiance that you're going to hear on tonight's show. Uh, we support them on Patreon. You should too. And uh, a big thank you to all of you guys in chat. So uh, if you get a chance, hit us up in chat. Uh, and we're definitely looking for your comments in chat uh, to see what you're interested in as well. So uh, if you have a question, just type question in all caps on the screen and we will definitely check you out and, and answer questions as quickly as we can. Uh, it's the fastest, easiest way for me to scan through chat and find questions that are specifically asked and uh, it helps me out as well. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't kill any elves and shove it into a stocking. Uh, elves are invisible. Uh, for all I know, they're crawling in and out of stockings and checking uh, to see what's there. Uh, I, I don't see a thing that that you know elf on a shelf maybe I don't know I, Maybe he's he's checking my stocking to make sure I, I don't have anything in there because I, I, You know naughty or nice. I don't know. We'll find out uh, But the, oh, yeah, there is one over there Who knew? So very interesting to see that so All right, so as we get started here, we're gonna double check our setup Make sure we're not too bright here. Make sure the light's in the right position. And a little bit higher. There we go. That should work. Whoops. Don't have anything following me here. All right. So, getting started. All right. So, getting the table cam. So, we're going to be working uh, quite a bit here on Oswald. So, you can take a look here at Oswald yourself. And you can just see how much this miniature is is just cram packed with stuff all over um, and uh, well he's just got a lot of stuff that's all I can say uh, let's see here and um, to go with that one of the first things I like to do with a primed white model is I like to hit it with a little bit of a wash it does take a moment for it to dry but I think what you'll find from that wash is that it uh, allows you to see the details that you wouldn't normally see. And to do that, I'm going to be using the Wargamer Monster Brush. Uh, I like it as, as a uh, good wash brush uh, because of its size and, and ability to soak in uh, the stuff. Um, so uh, the uh, paints we have out today are uh, plate metal, metal, plate mail metal, uh, true copper, Weapon Bronze, Leather Brown, Monster Brown, Pure Red, Mars Red, Snake Scales, Goblin Green, Troglodyte Blue, Void Shield Blue, Arid Earth, Matte White, Ash Gray, Matte Black, Elven Flesh, Barbarian Flesh, Soft Tone Wash, and Mid Brown Wash. Um, we're probably going to use most of these, but we're going to find out as we go, depending on, on the look of the model. So. The primer that was used was the Army Painter's Matte White uh, primer, which we love. Um, and you'll see almost immediately the difference in detail once the wash hits the model. We tease it out throughout the model. Suddenly all sorts of details will begin to show themselves, uh, even on camera, I think, for you guys too. So. And it's okay. Uh, the reason I'm using soft tone is it's, it's a very, very light chestnutty color. 
Uh, and on top of that chestnutty color, what it does is it, it'll only pool in the shadows, but it also kind of adds a little bit of grime style under color to the model. We can completely cover it if we need to, to hide it, but it also just adds a little bit of something there for, for a lot without taking too much away from the model itself for if we decide to go with other colors. shield. There's the chicken on the shield, which will become quite apparent as we continue to work this model. How is everybody out there today? Just a handful of colors, you betcha, just a handful. We got some happy Yuletide music today as well. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's just kind of a nice little background. Get you in the spirit while you're here. The Yuletide. Uh, I believe this one is called Yuletide. You can find it on uh, the Army Painter as well. So. Or not the Army Painter. <laughs> you can find it on Tabletop Audio. Uh, Tabletopaudio.com When I was uh, very young, if you hear the, the sounds of the bells and everything that you're hearing right now, um, uh, I went to England as a, as a young child, uh, and we were there for Thanksgiving and, and of course the post-Thanksgiving holiday rush in, in England, which is a little bit different than it is here in the States, uh, at least it was then when I was uh, 10. and. Um, the, the way this music is reminds me of one of the very large uh, churches we were in uh, that we got to tour uh, and the history of the place. I mean, it predated the Americas by, or at least the, the colonization of the Americas by a considerable time period. So it was uh, very interesting to uh, experience it as well as the echo within. And uh, so this also brings me back a happy memory going to visit my grandfather in England. Yeah. Well, you can actually download it uh, from tabletopaudio.com and have that for an ambiance in your house as well. Um, if you like this. And just to show you the difference, you can already see now the details of Oswald that you would not normally be able to see had we not been adding uh, this particular batch of uh, wash to it. So it's kind of one of those things that gives you um, a lot to see. Because one of the challenges of all white paint is seeing those details so you can see where those lines are and that can be difficult and challenging to say the least. If you're lurking out there and this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. 
uh, please say hello. We'd love to hear from you. Let's me know that you're out there. Um, otherwise, I'm talking to myself. Wizard of DC, good to see you. The wash being used is Soft Tone. Um, thanks for asking. The Soft Tone wash, it's uh, from the Army Painter. And I like it because it's, uh, it's reminiscent of an old wash I used to use from a different company called Chestnut Ink. That we used to turn into a wash. Now, in case you're wondering, the main ingredient inside the Army Painter washes is cheating. It makes life so much easier when you paint that it's almost like you're cheating, uh, as I like to joke. It's not actually cheating. Washes are a completely uh, useful skill set to understand how they can be applied and uh, used to help your paints and painting look good. All right, so we're just going to give that just a few minutes to dry, but you can already see the difference in the detail level that you can see there. Oh, well. Excellent, Wizard of DC. Wizard of DC, are you, uh, are you from DC by chance? Because we're in the DC area. this one so I don't have any wash go to waste it's just another model that I'll be doing uh, soon but the other thing you want to avoid doing while this stuff is is in play is you don't want air bubbles in there because it'll leave a, a little ring where the bubble was after it pops or dries so if you find a bubble, which normally you shouldn't, but if you do, make sure that you pop it and tease it out long before it has a chance to dry on the model. Believe me, you'll thank me for that advice later. Otherwise, you get this dark brown ring that just doesn't make any sense on your model. Especially if the, the wash is your last step. The only reason I'm doing this is I just don't want this wash to go to waste that I put on the palette. So since I have a couple other models that I've primed up to go, uh, this particular model is uh, one of the ones I've been looking forward to working on. And I'll probably either finish her up off stream or I will do this on stream and just mention that we already hit it with a soft tone wash. see how it pulls out the details on the dress as well that it wouldn't normally without the wash. Last little bit underneath here. There we go. I'll just let that sit. So do a quick little rinse here. Uh, so Yeah, so Wizard of DC, what are you working on lately? Any particular miniatures at all right now, or...?
Always excited to see what you guys are working on. Raptors, mm-hmm. Getting some new paints, all right, Lost Polymath. Worm Spat, to do test model colors from my hopefully new year of Rot Bringers. Oh, you're doing Rot Bringers. Rot Bringers are cool, man. Rot Bringers are real cool. I dig it, I dig it. One of the uh, other little tricks I've got here is I have this nifty little fan made by one of our awesome tech crew, Richard. Uh, that works right off of a USB port. So, because of that, uh, we'll see what we can do to get uh, that connected and get squared away. So, give me two seconds here. Go over to our nifty powered USB panel. Plug it right in. And go. Or not. <laughs> And um, obviously this is pretty cool, but the way we do it is we just simply put hold the fan in place and let it let it do its magic. Uh, you know, it's got the guard on it and everything. Obviously, some care needs to be taken safety-wise with these. Uh, and what's really impressive from from my perspective is the care Richard put into making this particular thing because it's so nifty and so quiet. Theoretically, we could run it on stream the whole time. Get some of those undercrofts. There we go. Because the one thing you don't want to do when you're painting is is paint your, your miniature while the wash is still wet, because then it'll just mix with the paint. And it'll create this effect. That, well, it, I mean, all sorts of crazy things can happen with paint effects that can wind up being pretty cool. But for this particular miniature, it's not the effect that we're going for. So, yeah, it's extremely low noise. I mean, like, this is it right by the mic. Here's it away from the mic. So you really don't hear a thing. Um, and I think we're almost done. Richard, if you're out there and you're watching, big thanks for this fan, buddy. This is this is huge. This is really huge. All right, Richard's my hero. Alrighty. And uh, he's one of those guys that when you're on the Discord and you're talking to him about things like cosplay and all the other stuff. He like goes, Oh, we could, we could do that. Here's how we do that. And he brings out like ribbon lights of LEDs and, and, and all sorts of other cool concepts and techniques. Uh, it's almost a never ending treat to talk to him. Um, so if you get a chance, hit him up on discord, ask him his thoughts on making USB fans. All right. So what should we start with? Usually the metals, right? Because you can cover up metals later if there's an issue. So there's a couple different things made of metal that I should probably point out. There is the lantern here uh, that's gonna have metal uh, around it. There is the pan here. Um, there's uh, the dagger handle, uh, the weapon heads, like the ax head, the hammer. Um, and that's, that's the biggies, right? So for the pot, I was actually going to do the pot in a kind of a true copper, uh, 
and weapon bronze combo just to kind of make it pop a little different and then for the lantern I was going to do it in plate mail metal uh, make it a little brighter uh, so I think I'll start with the lantern I'm going to switch away from my uh, uh, monster brush and go back to the wargamer regiment brush from the army painter uh, we're going to switch over to plate mail metal give it a good shake let's see here Bad Fapple. Let go. And uh, what's a mod? <laughs> All you guys are out there. It's so good to see you. Had this been white, I would never have seen where that started and stopped. Oh yeah, I've also got the shield up here too. Um, the shield I was gonna color except for the scratches in the shield. So we'll see what we get done there here in a little bit. Hopefully you guys are able to see what I'm doing okay. Yeah? Uh, Lost Polymath has been like Hero helper telling me when I'm not on camera. What's the phrase, the bigger the brush, the bigger the vision? You can see I got maybe just a hint of uh, metal right here. You can see it right there at the, uh, right there. I didn't mean to get metal there. That's the bottom of a quiver, but it's okay because we started with metals. We can cover that up fairly easily with the uh, leather color or whatever color we go with for the quiver. Heads. 
And this is Oswald the Overladen from Reaper Miniatures, Reaper Mini. You can go to reaper.com, Reaper Mini, excuse me, reaperminis.com or reaperminiatures.com and check them out. Um, this one I think was made in uh, quite a few years ago. And I've been meaning to paint this miniature for I don't know how long now. And I just, just now finally getting a chance to get to it. Got a Warhammer here with a purity seal too. Oh yeah, camera placement, yes, yes. I got some great feedback from you guys on Discord and so the camera placement is hopefully way, way better than it was. As the saying goes, you move the miniature to the brush, not the other way around. And there's a reason for that, and that's because your hand moves in a natural movement in a certain direction. And whenever you veer from that, you get uneven strokes or shakes or bad placement so by always working within the natural movement of the fingers you'll also notice that at any given point in time there's a couple ways you can do this you can brace your wrists together to do this uh, but I always brace both my hands together to maintain a steadiness and a frame because if you see my arms as well a frame for when I'm painting um, by doing both of those together it's just one of those little tricks of the trade that that allows me to uh, maintain a steady hand and at the same time um, control uh, for both the miniature and the brush so I get no shake Oops, sorry about that So there's something, <laughs> I'm not sure what that is, if that's a side of pork chop or what right here next to the blades on this. And I am perturbed because it's also sticking out on the other side of the axe there. Hmm. I shall have to do some research perhaps to find out. Okay, I got any buckles or anything I need to worry about? A buckle right there. And... Well, we can get to those rivets after the fact. Alright, so that takes care of the, the metal bits on the lantern. Which you can see the lantern right there on his back. As well as the bullseye effect the hilt on the dagger on his boot, and of course the weapons he's carrying right there. You know what I think I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna metal that up a little bit. I'm gonna metal this up a little bit. If I had some awesome medieval transfers, I would be using those right about now. 
on that shield. All right, so rinsing the brush. I'm removing the plate mail metal from it. Doing a quick clean up here. Off camera now, on camera placement, yeah. All right, now I'm switching over to, you can see what we're gonna do. We're gonna go with uh, uh, copper and then maybe some edging with the weapon bronze to get that color contrast on some of the edging. Um, maybe I'm bad, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I shouldn't do it that way. We'll, we're gonna find out today as a group. Yeah, it's, it's like my canvas. That's a good way to to talk about my miniature here. Well, there may be no wrong answers, but there are right answers if you're attempting to achieve certain effects that look real. And uh, yeah, the color may be cool, but if it looks like because there's a lot of different paint styles, and I tend to try to go for the one that looks a little more subdued and realistic. But there's also like an animation style that can be really cool. There's a heavy line, um, heavy lining. There's you know all sorts of different methods. Uh, I try to make it easy to see the model as if it were real. Um, of course, there's people way better at that than me, but you know, this is my show. Maybe I'll have them on as a guest. Let's get that pot. You can see that okay? Yeah. the underside here my lighting is a lot better today too versus the last few episodes where I had lighting in a different position I'm much happier with my lighting this time around I'm also going to do the lining on the shield here so that the outer edge of it
the lower points. The shield. I can't believe he's carrying a chicken. But I love it. So you can see the outline of the shield. It's just a little bit more along this edge here. There we go. There we go. Shield there. And what I also notice is I missed the ring around the lantern here. And I want to get that as well. So I still have plenty of, of plate mail here that I can work with. And I'm just going to hit that little ring and uh, get it done here. Next up, he's got at least two bed rolls and a leather satchel. So for the bed rolls, I figured I'd go with uh, kind of some interesting colors, but for the leather satchel, uh, we're looking at these two colors right here, which are uh, leather brown and uh, monster brown. And uh, we're gonna start with the leather brown and then highlight uh, with a little bit of monster brown. Um, both great colors. I've used Leather Brown numerous times on the show. Monster Brown as well. Um, pretty much old standbys. Uh, between that and Uniform Gray, probably some of the most used paints uh, that we've got. Oh, the red Metallica? Yeah, I mean, like, Definitely post on the Discord and let me see your uh, stuff in the Miniatures channel. I'd love to see how the uh, the new AP Colors and Red Metallica comes out. Still needs more mixing. Lots of leather brown there. So we'll get leather brown going to work for us here. Yeah. Good and clean. Load the brush. There's uh, a leather bag here in particular. I'm curious what everybody thinks we should paint his uh, shirt and trousers colors. Now remember, Oswald the Overladen is obviously a a uh, henchman manservant somewhere, so he's not going to be too splendiferously dressed. 
but he's definitely overladen. Or maybe he's just the guy who, who just can't help it and he's a class three hoarder and he's got everything under the sun. And just can't bring himself to throw anything away. Also a scary thought. Uh, and unfortunately he's the one guy in the party who could never get a bag of holding. Every leathery bit we think that might work. Uh, so a lot of the trim and, and heavier parts of, like say this quiver for example, also a good choice. Definitely some challenging stuff underneath here. Some challenging angles anyway. Uh, let's see here, what else have I got here? There's that little spot that we accidentally hit, and we've already covered it up. So that metal silvery bit is now gone. As they say, I believe there was a uh, great article on painting spaceships a long time ago that I read that uh, discussed some things in the uh, the beautiful statement within that really struck home for me was that paint hides all painting sins. So when you mess up, you can use more paint to hide it. Yeah, maybe he is delivering stuff to those in need. You know, people who need weapons. Pots and pans, a chicken, lanterns, bows and arrows, bed rolls, a very large heavy book with bookmark, you know, a shield. This is some poor guy, some poor, some poor servant of a knight who's just hauling all the heavy stuff around for, for his master. Poor, poor guy. I think that takes care of most of the leathery bits. So I've got a barrel here. However, I think I want to go a little lighter on the barrel and I may start that one with Monster Brown. So we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, same with the handles on the weapons. Uh, what else? Okay, so now let's look at some color. We'll let those browns dry and then I'll hit come back with monster brown. Ah, you know what? I can hit the other parts with the monster brown while that brown dries. See? We got we got skills, we got ability, we got things we can do. Ale? Oh that's of course he's bringing ale or mead. What do you think the keg on his back is for? Here, check this bad boy out. Right on his back there, there's a keg. You can't beat that. So. 
His old dirty purple merchant outfit from the old days. You want me to paint this guy purple? How about some grays and a hint of color, possibly of his master's livery? So maybe he's got the neck thing that we could do in the same livery and, and go from there, maybe? And then do that same color, possibly on the shield itself. Just uh, purple's royal, so typically a royal color, so it's not something you typically throw on uh, just anybody unless they're the the king's royal servant, perchance. Challenging angle, because I got a f spots in the fingers here. I tend to go into fingers point first, by the way, yeah, when you see notches like that, just because it tends to take care of uh, 90% of uh, the issues there. Um, and the, the point of the brush has a much better uh, coverage option than say a straight up shot would. help if you want to let you see what I'm doing yep 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 glug 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 yeah you gotta get that you gotta get those sips of uh, water and, and cocktail or ale in wherever you can get them Oops. So. a little bit out on my thumb and just hit the high points so it's a little bit lighter on the edges here and I hit the points from the top as if the Sun was at high noon um, and my reasons for that is, is by keeping it consistent um, much like with painting, you want light to be consistent, otherwise it looks weird. Uh, the same effect occurs with miniatures uh, when you're doing your lighting. Alright. I'm going to add a different green to this, because as I'm looking at the model, I see goblin green and, and I've got snake scales, and it just seems a little too light for me. I want something a little more earthy, but not not necessarily too much. Um, no, no, no. I think we're gonna try this one. Elf green. I haven't used elf green in forever. 
second guys Just saw something I need to do there. Let's get some more going here. All right, take care, Lost Polymath. It was good to see you. Aesthetic. Okay. Sorry about that. Had a bit of a light problem here. There we go. All right. And make sure my lighting is good. And set up everything properly. There we go. There we go. All right, back to work. Getting this elf green in. And you guys tell me what you think here. Wizard of DC, are you actually painting while you watch tonight? because I'm going to layer it up. But I want it to be thin. So I can see all the detail, every little crease, everything in here. So, there we go. Awesome. Awesome, man.
side of this bit a little bit. And then there's a little bit more on the back here that shows, so we need to get that bit too. Again, some monster brown, a little keg on his back here. Go thin with it, because we don't want to lose any detail. And then after I get done with the wood bits, I'll hit the metal bits with a hint of bronze. Or, excuse me, not bronze. Uh, yeah, weapon bronze. And then I'll hit the pan on his back as well with a little bit of that. I think I will go with a, a lighter goblin green after I do the self green. It's kind of a way to tone it up a notch with that darker undercone. Well, thanks, Wizard of DC. Glad to have you join us. Awesome to have you. And if you're not already following us on social media, you can check us out there. Just linked in chat. Uh, we're on Twitter at The Games Tavern, on Instagram at The Games Tavern, and on Facebook. Just look up The Games Tavern. You can see us in every one of those places. All right. I think I'm going to slightly darker ultramarine blue for one of these bedrolls and then I'll highlight it up with some troglodyte blue. Whoa! That needs more mixing. 
What was I thinking? We were thinking of adding miniature specific content to our Patreon to include like the paint plans for all the miniatures we paint so you can see not only what we did but the actual written out paint plan that we follow uh, including the adjustments after the fact to, to achieve the same effect. I, I'm just kind of curious what you guys think of that. So, um, Again, that, that brown wash is really making this a lot easier to see all the minute details and, and pull them out. Which I wouldn't normally be able to see had I just left it primer white and went straight on um, as easily. So, you know, it reduces your eye strain. That's one bedroll in blue. Um, you know, I could do the shield in blue as well. Do you think that's a good idea?
getting the uh, collar device here. I don't know what you call this with the, the ring with the little crenellations on it. Seems like a lot of extra work to stitch when you're doing everything by hand. If I didn't know better, I'd say that was a dustpan on that, on the X there. I'm thinking it very well might be a dustpan. You know, because he's got to clean up after people. some adjustments here to get this angle right. thing about the camera is it never lies to you. green for the other uh, bedroll here. And then after that we're gonna probably switch up songs. We'll go to Winter Festival.
an angle in there. I think my next step is to get a little hint of color on this, this giant thick book. And I think the first thing I want to do is get the cover of the book done. But I want it to be a little more spectacular than what we've seen so far. But I also want to make the bookmark in it red. So I don't want the book to be the same color as the bookmark. Uh, kind of a tough spot here for color. Um, I could go with a leather toe. I could go with um, a metallic cover, but that just won't look right with this particular cover. I could do a blue cover, but that would be just a little bit weird, I think, for, for what we're trying to get at on this. I think what I'm going to have to do is go with uh, another blue color, but not the same color as the... I think we're going to go with a deep blue. Completely different than what we thought we would go with, anticipating everything. Uh, deep blue it is. We're going to have so many colors on this model, which is kind of cool, uh, because that's what really makes it pop. But then again, what about a black color? Maybe not a deep blue. What if we did a, not a completely matte black, but a necromancer cloak, kind of a it's kind of this dark ashy gray, charcoal gray color. I think we're going to do that. All right. One second here, guys. For, uh, for this particular miniature, though, I mean, the color is kind of half of what makes it pop. Um, of all the objects he's carrying versus the muted poor gray man below. So I think the necromancer cloak on the book will create... Kind of, it works both as either as a wizard spell book or perhaps a book of deeds or exaltation that's being run around for a, a, a noble of some sort. You know, it kind of gives a... A cool option there, um, otherwise. And, challenges these books create for painting is what makes the the joy and the challenge of this so exciting.
Oops. Keep up, Oswald. Carry all the goods. I see it now. We had a video treat during our break. That's a little segment we made earlier uh, that we think will be uh, well useful to everybody who's got to paint, clean out their paint cups or their paint palettes. And uh, we do a fair amount of painting over here. And um, one of the things that we do when we paint is we got to clean up afterwards, right? And um, the harder it is to clean up. Uh, the harder it is to, to get done with the rest of the awesome stuff you want to do. So one of the things we do is we use a, a product called LA is Totally Awesome, which we're going to show you how we use it. So hopefully you guys find that to be a useful batch of uh, inspiring information. Necromancer cloak is a great color for boots because it's it's got this darkness to it, but it, it's also got this. I guess how would you say it? It's it's kind of naturally the color that black leather gets when it's aged a bit and weathered. Let's face it. Uh, Oswald the Overladen is certainly uh, too busy carrying everything around to do proper, you know, shine on the boots and stuff.
That other bedroll one more time with the elf green. Beautiful. Wonderfully. All right, now. Let's switch over to Winter Festival music. Hey, we're going to switch over real quick to a uh, midpoint break, and when we come back, uh, we are going to wrap up Oswald the Overladen and uh, some of the various colors that go on to him. So, excitedly. So, check out the uh, quick story we've got for you over the break. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Have you ever needed quality images of characters for your games or stories, but couldn't find the time or assets to create them? Epic Character Generator comes to your rescue with lots of features. After launching the program, you can select a base character to start working on. Just pick a wardrobe and begin customizing it. At any time, you can jump to the settings to turn other packs on and use their content on your character too. There are certain items which not always fit together nicely. You can use the toggle feature to decide whether these items should be on top or on the bottom. You can use the coloring tool to give your items a unique look. A few items can deform the base body in a minor way and others can make huge changes. 
How about moving around some decorations in the background? Or even the whole character to find the perfect composition? You can save your character as a data file and load it back later to continue editing it. You can export your character as a PNG image with a background selected from the program. Or choose a transparent one, you can use it later in any environment. So, have you crafted your first character already? Epic Character Generator, now available on Android. Hey there, I'm talking to you today about something that we all have to deal with as painters and that's getting the gunk out of your paint cup. So to kind of put it an example, I'm going to show this here on the table cam there so you guys can see that. This is one of my paint cups. You may have seen it from some of the shows. Uh, I use dry erase marker often to write if it's color or metallics. Uh, you can see the paint cup itself is just full of dried in gunk and other paint. So what is the problem when we're trying to clean one of these bad boys out? Well, the problem is, is that I would scrape for a long, long time on this stuff. And, and at one point in time, I had to figure out what was a way to clean these things easily. Now, I can soak these things in hot water for about an hour and, and put, still put some elbow grease in there. But there is something that I do use that helps me get stuff out uh, pretty quickly. And that stuff is called LA's Totally Awesome. Now, I'm not selling or hawking LA's Totally Awesome. This is a product I actually use. They're not paying me for any of this. Uh, it was just one of those tricks that we figured out, uh, thanks to some other friends in the hobby who turned me on to this stuff. And, and I've used it for everything from cleaning uh, cups and palettes to stripping models, metal ones mostly, uh, of paint as needed. So LA is totally awesome. So how do you use it? Well, it's pretty simple. You pour some LA is totally awesome in the cup. You let it sit for about an hour or two, run some hot water in there, let it sit for another few minutes, and then take a you know a Brillo pad or a sponge and just wipe it out. For the most part, it takes care of everything that you've got in there. So what we're gonna show next is exactly how we're gonna do that. We're just gonna pour some in this cup, uh, go into a, a sink area, and show you guys how easy it is to clean it out. All right, so we've come into the bathroom. We're going to use that on the same mug that I showed you before. Uh, LA is totally awesome. So I've already got some open stuff right here that I've used to clean out some of the stuff earlier. I'm just gonna pour a little bit in and let the magic happen. Uh, from here, typically what I do is I'll use one of these to clean it out right after I get it to soak a little bit. Um, the stuff works very fast. I've never had any real major problems with it. Um, a little dab will do you. And uh, you just let it sit and it'll clean it right out. And you can dilute it too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some hot water. As soon as it gets hot, we're going to have that uh, pour in here a little bit. And we'll see what we can get off here right now live with you guys. So. All right, let that warm up. The reason I like hot water is it causes the, uh, the cup itself to expand at a different rate than the paint expands. So that also helps pop any dug-in paint that's dried and locked in at the curvature or, or the, the uh, angles on the, on the cup itself. Uh, because both materials expand at different rates, it means that they're more prone to separate. And the minute they start separating, the LA is totally awesome starts to get between it as well, which is also really useful. almost there. Um, from here I'll also take some time and go ahead and wipe off the color off the mug. That's the great part about dry erase markers. They come right off. Um, 
And the reason I label uh, color on one and metallics on another, just in case you don't remember uh, or you're unfamiliar with what we do with that, is we rinse our metallics in one cup and our colors in another to keep metallics from getting onto our color and our paint later on. Almost there. Okay, thanks to the modern miracles of editing film, we were able to cut short uh, all that long, lengthy wait of waiting for the water to warm up. And uh, we're just going to go right to town. So just in case you can't see it, hopefully you can in the angle here. We've got the uh, LA's Totally Awesome inside the mug uh, where it's soaked in a bit. And uh, we're going to add just a little bit of water. And from there, uh, we're going to then take this Brillo pad and just wipe it in. Uh, now when we started, remember there was stuff that was just stuck all over it, uh, all the way down where it's dried multiple times uh, from rinse and paint. And uh, this was my colors cup, so it had plenty of colors in it. Um, let me do a quick rinse and pour. And uh, just one more little wipe out there. Yeah. And uh, from here, I did two wipes, basically. You saw me just swirl it around in a big circle a couple different times all the way around. And then you saw me rinse and pour everything out. Uh, just doing a final rinse. And then if you take a look, you'll see that the cup is completely clean. Now I'm gonna rinse it for an extended period of time to get the LA's totally awesome out of it because I don't want that on my paint either. But from there, we've totally cleaned out the cup and we've totally provided A completely clean surface for everybody to use. Ta-da! Okay, so coming back in from the bathroom, the only thing I did is just give it a quick dry out, but as you can see, the inside of the mug is completely clean. Uh, you can also see that on the, the paint cam or the cam table here, the table cam here as well. And that is LA is totally awesome. Again, this product is great. Uh, you can find it at most stores. It's yellow in color. It's LA totally awesome if you get a chance to take a look at it. Uh, the great part about it is this stuff comes from the dollar store. So any dollar store should carry it. It's a fantastic product. I love the, the listings of stuff it does. Grease, wine, liquor, gum, oil, varnish, paint, of course, paint, hair dye, food stains, grape juice, berry juice, blood stains, because apparently that's important too, and many, many more. You can dilute this. You don't have to pour it straight in like I do. Uh, diluting it's perfectly okay. Uh, one to one dilution mixture should be more than uh, sufficient to clean most stuff if you let it sit for a few hours. Uh, it's fantastic. Again, check it out. LA is totally awesome. Fantastic product. Uh, dollar store, the same place where we buy our paint mugs. Dollar store, it's all you need for your paint mugs. Dollar store paint mugs. Have an awesome day, everyone. And we're back. Hey, hopefully you guys enjoyed the uh, break video there um, and got something out of that because we, we really enjoyed putting that together for you. Uh, I had to move a lot of cameras around and get the microphones situated in just the right spot to make that happen. So hopefully there was some, some value added to show you how we clean our paint cups and our palettes very quickly using that uh, LA is totally awesome. So um, anyway, um, back to work. Here we go. Uh, we're working on Oswald's, or excuse me, uh, Oswald the Overladen from Reaper Mini. It's one of the coolest minis that they uh, they make in terms of a kind of a background mini or a, a project mini. So um, definitely enjoying the uh, the detail level of it. So uh, let's see here. So we've we've done the clothing. We've done the book. We were going to do the bookmark next. Uh, we're going to start with uh, pure red here to get the bookmark done. And then uh, once the bookmark is complete, we'll see what we do next after that. I shouldn't need too much in the way of paint, but I definitely need the paint mixed. 
before I can use it. Uh, otherwise it's going to be way too off and that won't do. Let's try that again. Much better. Much, much better. A little dab will do you. That's all we need. So the bookmark is right down here at the bottom. I just put a hint of red on there. I'm going to tease it out and I will go multiple thin coats on this because I want lots of control uh, when I'm starting to apply this to such a uh, specific area. And reds are Reds are an interesting color. It's one of the smallest pigments, so it's one of the hardest to cover up if you make a mistake. But, you know, everything's coverable. But I just prefer to keep it uh, thin so that I have maximum control. Oh, and I promised Winter Festival music, so let's get that going. is in this book, I wonder. Using a color called Arid Earth, and I'm going to be using this for the fletching on the arrows in the quiver and for the pages of the book itself. We will start by swishing this around, getting it super thin. I'm going to actually shake it up some more and add just a smidge more pigment. Huh. Again, this is arid earth. Parchment decree of some sort. And then 
pages there, look at that. I like this color because it's kind of a yellowed paper color that when you hit it with a brown wash it uh, it should look like a yellowed paper and will contrast nicely. Beautiful. All right, now from there. I'm also going to hit the chicken with this color, but instead of uh, washing it in the traditional sense, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash it in a flesh wash, and hopefully that'll bring out the chicken's fleshy colors a little more than, than most. Um, And then maybe I'll hit it with a little pink on top of that. There are certainly some challenges in this miniature in terms of how to separate the bow here with the chicken there. Um, most of which can be solved with a good wash, I think, to keep the contrast uh, between the two pretty, pretty high. And then I'm going to go with chocolate blue on the shield. pumped a little bit. There we go. I just don't like that.
Hmm. Yeah, definitely gonna go with a gray color here shortly. So we're going to go with ash gray for the clothing, I think, but I don't want to get too crazy on the clothing until I know what I'm doing the other colors on here. So we definitely need to add some more leather brown to the mix um, and get some more, more of that going. Um, plenty to work with here still. Example of the leather sheath here. Oops, let me hold that further forward and actually see what's going on here. This got pushed back the wrong way slightly.
Kill. Alright, now, if there's any other spots that need leather treatment. Next up, um, a hint more color, some of these bits here. So we are looking at possibly this bag right there to be a hint of pure red with Mars red. And I think we'll go with Mars red. Oh. My goodness. Hopefully you guys are enjoying your Sunday night. Again, going real thin so we have control. Oops. Fairing still has a fair bit of water from the last rinse. This color again is Mars Red. So it's a little more rust colored, I think. And uh, I like that when we talk about red cloth. Uh, sacks and stuff like that. I think it's a much more realistic color, especially when you put it on a bright uh, background, like what we did with the white primer and the the shading will naturally pool as well when you go thin. Um, but in addition to that, having the uh, soft tone wash across the model really helps darken the shading automatically. Uh, underneath as well. So. You get a great effect just with the first coat already. Mark a little bit of this Mars red as well, just to brighten it a notch. And no, I'm not going to do that with that. I'll use the barbarian flesh and the flesh wash for that. I think what I'll do is I will hit this bow. Or not this bow, this quiver, with the same red color as well.
Ooh, I'm getting streaking. How am I getting streaking? Streaking's not good. Goblin green. What's a little go both green between friends, right? Oh, except that that's the same color as this top there. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna do it anyway. Better yet. I think bow. You can see the details of the model. There's different accoutrements. All being taken up. I think I am going to go for a different blue. I am going to go for a. Blue here. I can do a wolf gray maybe. Mm. Let's go with a deep blue. So I'm going to do a little trick here where I use the deep blue on two different sides of the model, but they're not going to be two different sides you can actually see at the same time. So hopefully this trick works really well. It allows me to create the effect that I want to create here. Because on one side I want this pack to be a really cool color to contrast with the other blues and other things that we have here. On the other hand, I need a similar blue for some other stuff on the other side of the model. So I can use the same color for two different textures and it's not as noticeable. Let's 
sorry. I gotta see. You do this, I need a very specific angle here. So that I'm not also painting this rope. And I'm not also painting the back end of this shield. I think I'm going to switch over back to the Yuletide sound. I think it was a much more interesting sound. That was Deep Blue. Next up, we're switching back to Pure Red. pure red after all. Nice Mars red back end, but uh, a little smoothness from that pure red. A little brighter pop there maybe.
lot of colors. So I'm going to do a little bit of monster brown and just a very, very, very small smidge of ash gray to kind of give an ash wood look. Not placing them in direct contact with each other because I don't want the paints to mix, but what I do want is to get just a smidge of gray on the brush, mix it in with the brown to get a little bit lighter. I need to load more, I will, because I don't want it to be completely the same brown shade, and I want it to have those hints of gray really showing in there. As I paint the bow, it'll have an ashy gray look to it. which will contrast nicely with the um, um, leathery brown that, that it sits in the quiver for. extra careful is I really like how the rope has come out as far as hemp rope is concerned it, it looks really good and I don't want to do anything to, to mess that up or to cover it and have to, to do the whole thing and I can just let it be not that I'm not prepared to do so if need be but you know right now I've got a batch of rope that looks perfect and there's no sense in messing that up
what I'm doing is I'm using this uh, larger brush to brush off the blue that I accidentally got onto this barrel, this little mini keg, and that worked beautifully, actually. Mistake was made. Gotta hide that. So, I'm going to do a little bit of um, weapon bronze. Um, with the weapon bronze, what we're going to do is we're going to do the metal bits along the top of the keg here, and we're going to highlight a little bit on the, uh, the pan there. I love this color. This is such a great metallic color. And it's fantastic for catching the high points on this particular pot. It also will be a nice contrast uh, to the perfection of the uh, shield there. Or actually, a similar metal to show for the shield there. So we'll probably highlight this with some of the uh, plate mail to get some extra shine on her.
I am getting Oswald the Overladen's dustpan. the hilt of this dagger which I did say I would get. I'm trying to see if there's anything else I'm missing here on this. So now I've got to get that front little pouch, his clothing, and that bottle done. I've got 30 minutes to do it. I think it can be done. Let's see what we can do here. have another go of some blue in the front here with that pouch. He's got this giant pack he's got strapped across his thighs there, poor fella. Uh, anyway, I would enjoy carrying any gear. Even if I jumped out of airplanes. And those who know what that means. I don't mind being this a little bit bright because I know I'm going to hit this with another another la layer of, of soft tone probably just to tone it back down and dirty it up a little bit. So. Am 
we're gonna do that bottle. There is a trick. No, I don't want to do a brown bottle. It's gotta be the right shade of green. We're going to go with Angel Green. Because when I hit it later with a gloss paint, it'll look like glass. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit it with a couple little glints of white toward the top. And the reason I'm doing that is because the glints of white will look like light reflecting off of it. Okay, while I'm waiting 
for some of the green to dry. I'm going to go ahead and move into the Barbarian Flesh for the face and for the hands. What's going on here? So I'm going to go with the darker barbarian flesh, really thin, and layer it up from there to the elven flesh. And then uh, flush tones after that. Or flush wash after that. There we go. 
Now I'm going to go with a slightly smaller brush for the highlights on the face. I always do. Uh, I'm going to go with a Elven Flesh. And I'm just trying to pick up the highlights on both the face and the fingers just to pick up the high points a little bit. Make sure I shake this up really good. Um. <sighs> Hopefully you guys are having a good time out there today. down to the point where it needs to be the consistency I needed it for control. And then as I mentioned with the chicken, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of that uh, flesh, uh, flesh town here. To bring it out a little bit. I'm catching the edges you can see here and where the depressions are on the, the chicken here just to get a little bit redder. Just to add the right kind of contrast along the edges so that when we hit it with the flush wash it looks appropriately chicken. And then as a final strip, final step I think on this gentleman. What we're going to do is we're going to hit the ash gray on the clothes.
makes him appropriately drab enough that uh, he uh, doesn't stick out too much amid all of the uh, other accoutrements that he is carrying. Drab traveler's clothes. The only way they could have made this model better is if they had found a way <laughs> somehow on the few pieces of clothing that he's got showing to have patches to put on them. Like where he's had to stitch up his, his clothing a little more. I like that they gave him a boot knife though.
Definitely some challenging angles to get in here with uh, all the other items in the way and not get paint where you don't want it. Maybe it's a bia.
So now that that's done, we're gonna hit her again with soft tone. Actually, we're gonna hit some stuff with soft tone, some stuff with mid brown, and some stuff with flesh wash. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna really go with the the soft tone first, then the mid brown, and then the flesh wash in the appropriate spots. So soft tone was there already, so I'm gonna just put it right back in the same spot. I'm only gonna use a little at a time and go with what I need at that point. So the soft tone I am going with on some of these areas that are supposed to look a little bit dirtied. All right, next up, the mid-brown, where I'm going to hit the browns specifically.
final wash will be the flesh tones. You can already see that focus there. The detail level. You can see the chicken on the shield, the lantern, the copper pot, all the different goods. This poor fella. And that's the completed model. Oh, I forgot to add just a hint of white to the top edge of the bottle. Also another little trick. I didn't do anything but hit the primed white areas of the lantern with, uh, with the softest of tone just to give a little bit of off-white off color to it, but it's essentially glass.
What a great looking model, ready to go. The only thing I'll do now is <coughs> hit the brown here on the ground with uh, a muddier dirt called dirt splatter. Uh, maybe hit it with a wash to get the texture to show, but uh, after that it's done. That can be done very, very quickly. this with two coats. The thin, thinner coats will get into the crevasses first and then I, when I highlight it with a slightly lighter brown it will pull up the high points. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. Once that dries, I'll hit it with the highlight. And we'll finish off the show there, guys. So we'll finish off the basing the model. We'll take some photos. We'll share that on social media, and you guys will see it. So uh, thank you so much for checking us out today. Be sure and check out our Patreon uh, at the Games Tavern, and be sure and check out our YouTube channel also, and catch us on YouTube. So um, thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for checking us out, and thank you so much for watching what we did today. And uh, we really appreciate everybody coming in and uh, being awesome and, uh, well, just being a great part of the community. Anyway. Uh, oh, look, somebody we have to ban who is uh, spamming. Anyway, um, if there's anything else you guys want to know, hit us up in our Discord. Ask us all sorts of cool questions. We're always there for you guys. Anyway, take care, guys. See you guys next week.